This is Jamaica Magazine, the show with the information you need to know. Thanks for starting your weekend with us. What we have in store for you today? The modern world has given rise to the use of improved technology. Don't shy away. It can actually make life easier for you, particularly global positioning satellite systems. We have the deeds for you on GPS. Also, it's exactly a week away from Jamaica Day 2017. To get you in the state of mind for the observation, we delve into the work and life of cultural icon Louise Bennett Coveney. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Stay with us for those features and much more. Sixty yeah, thousand. Yeah, yeah. Six eight yeah, thousand. Yeah, yeah. How much I want? Yeah, man. Two bills I want. No, yeah, man. No one. Yeah, man. Same. 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 Think them can't rob me. So Uncle Fancy, is the same thousand dollar you were trying to get the six? Seriously? Tell them again now my math brains. Math count. Math count. Sponsored by the Ministry of Education. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, February 17. The governments of Jamaica and Venezuela have signed an agreement to execute the Petrojam Refinery Expansion Project at a cost of approximately one billion U.S. dollars. Energy Minister Andrew Wheatley signed the joint venture agreement in Caracas on Wednesday with Petroleus de Venezuela S.A. PDVSA. The expansion will increase Petrojam's crude oil capacity from 36,000 barrels of oil per day to 50,000 barrels of oil per day. It will also facilitate enhancements to the plant, including a desulfurization facility to reduce the sulfur content in diesel, a delayed coker to produce higher quality products such as gasoline and jet fuel, and a vacuum tower to produce vacuum gas oil. The project will be executed by Sino Hydro Corporation Limited, which will undertake financing, engineering, procurement, and construction. Venezuela's president, Nicolas Maduro, has hailed the signing as a most significant step and one that will promote growth, development and partnership. Minister Wheatley also praised it as an important milestone, but says the real work now begins to make the upgrade a reality. The next steps will involve the establishment of a task force compromised of five representatives from either country. The task force should be formed within the next month and will have responsibility for finalizing contractual arrangements with Sino Hydro for project execution. Finance Minister Audley Shaw has signed a 326 million US dollar loan agreement with the China Exim Bank to finance the new Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project. The funds will also facilitate the extension of the toll east-west highway from Maypen to Williams Field. The agreement was signed on Thursday in China, where Minister Shaw and other cabinet members are meeting with various Chinese government and business leaders during a week-long visit. Meanwhile, Jamaica is to benefit from increased investments in infrastructural development and other critical areas following the signing of a framework agreement with the People's Republic of China on Thursday. The agreement calls on both governments to collaborate in the areas of construction and infrastructure, cement manufacturing, resource processing, equipment manufacturing and light industry. The signing agreement for development, cooperation on productive capacity and investment is a signal and a manifestation of our mutual commitment to moving forward together in a very constructive manner. Other areas for support under the agreement include the tourism and agriculture sectors. The Ministry of Local Government will be providing drought assistance to several communities in Manchester, St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland and Hanover. A release from the Ministry reveals that $40 million will be made available to provide potable water to the areas. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie says the Ministry's initiative will support the national drought relief effort. The minister explains that rainfall has been particularly scarce in central, southern and western Jamaica. 
As a result, he says, the local government ministry is committed to periodic initiatives to provide water, but will also be implementing creative, lasting solutions for people in drought-stricken communities. Government will be spending $7 million under the Tablets in Schools program to provide 17,500 tablets. This is to increase learning opportunities for students. The project will also see the distribution of 385 charging carts and 630 laptops and audiovisual display units to 210 schools. Funding for this initiative is being provided by the Universal Service Fund. The money has been set aside in the 2017-2018 estimates of expenditure now before the House of Representatives. Since the launch of the Tablets in Schools program in 2014, approximately 25,000 tablets have been distributed to schools and teachers island-wide. And finally, Prime Minister Andrew Holness broke ground on Thursday for the construction of a 150,000 square foot business process outsourcing BPO space in Port Moore. The facility, which is being built in the Port Moore Informatics Park, is expected to employ 3,000 persons. The 23 million US dollar project is being implemented by the Port Authority of Jamaica, PAJ, and is expected to be completed in one year. Prime Minister Holness says the project is evidence of government's commitment to fast-tracking critical investment programs. My job is to reach into that deep pipeline of projects and rip them out, cut through the dense bureaucracy that sometimes becomes self-serving and get to this point. Chairman of the PAJ, Ambassador Nigel Clark, says the BPO services sector is expected to grow by over 50% and the authority is responding to those prospects and keeping a pace of rising demand. Today's groundbreaking ceremony represents another step towards the achievement of market leadership within this sector and it provides support to the national growth agenda. Over 4,000 new jobs have been added to the BPO sector within the last three years. Revenues from the industry grew from approximately 230 million US dollars in 2012 to 400 million US dollars in 2015. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. I'm young, gifted, and violence free. I will stand up for peace. No matter what you say, you can't take that away. I'm young, gifted, and violence free. I choose to live. I choose to be me. Have you ever been traveling across Jamaica's countryside? You stop for direction and you're told, cross the bridge, round the road, up the hill. And when you see a mango tree, you're rich. <laughs> We love our Jamaican folk, but direction should be more precise than that. Don't you think? Technology is available locally to do just that. Watch this. GPS is synonymous with space and location. It stands for Global Positioning System, a dedicated system of satellites whose main task is always to pinpoint a complementary receiver's location on Earth. In turn, navigation system receivers tap into the 24 satellites comprising the GPS navigation system. Now, these devices are equipped with mandatory capabilities to get data transmissions, give accurate readings of the user's whereabouts, as well as estimates of time and distance of a predefined destination point. As travel maps, GPS navigation systems outperform traditional paper maps in many ways, giving real-time information that's of great value to travelers. As a result, whether travelers are in a vehicle or on foot, becoming lost would be difficult with the technology of GPS navigation supporting the excursion. In 450 meters, turn right on Garden Boulevard. This technology, already widely used in other parts of the world, is now here in Jamaica. In 2009, the JamNav GPS navigation device, programmed with extensive details of roadways, attractions, interest points and basic amenities, was introduced to the island. 
The GPS navigation system for Jamaica, the first of its kind for the Caribbean, has over 18,000 kilometers of roads, over nearly 20,000 points of interest. We're talking about every gas station, every police station, every hotel, pharmacy, supermarket, um, those type of things. There's 20,000 of them in 68 different categories. Um, it's, it's quite a rich database in terms of, of, of comprehensiveness and completeness of the entire Jamaica. This piece of equipment is man's next best friend. Detachable. It can be removed from one car to another. But how does it work? You just program your destination and follow the command. What this has done was allow for the tourists to get out of the all-inclusives and go and explore. It allows the, the, um, the city person to explore Jamaica, go out of town and go somewhere, find somewhere, do something and come back safe. Jamnav was developed and produced by Mona Geoinformatics Institute, MGI, at the University of the West Indies, a licensed Garmin map developer. The system reflects the same quality and content that users would be familiar with in the United States, Canada or Europe. However, MGI has taken into consideration all the local complexities in delivering such a product to the island. I mean, obviously the road network is all connected. You, the road networks are coded for one-way streets, they're coded for um, dual carriageways and so on, overpass and underpass. The GPS navigation is ideal for the average road user as it allows calculation of faster and shorter routes. It also provides alternative routes in the event of a roadblock, while allowing the user never to get lost. Jamnav was designed for tourists and locals alike, with practical applications for local delivery and career companies, fleet operators such as rental, tour and bus companies, and national security uses. As a map, the GPS navigation system receiver is simply effective and is definitely worth having. However, while we marvel at its navigational usage, this technological innovation is not restricted to map-related use. Launched in 1974 by the United States Department of Defense, GPS, Global Positioning System, is here to stay. So as the navigation devices become more advanced, we witness the demonstration of the built-in systems by car makers, the various handheld devices with music and video playing features, as well as the smartphones that are now compatible with the navigation system. And Jamaica, we are well on our way. Let's celebrate Jamaica to the world! Fastest man in the world. First Jamaican woman to win gold in Olympic 100 meter sprint. An upcoming global superstar. Mouth watering meals. And a vibrant set of people. We are Jamaicans. Let's get together and bring back the love. The greatest of all time, Louise Bennett Coverley. Who can chat like a she? No gossip here, no full, full chat, but pure chatting about confidence and loving our likeness. One of Jamaica's leading cultural entities has documented her journey for all to see. Watch this. This long time you have never seen you. You're just walking up and down like huh? My auntie wrote to say, keep by your mouth the girl tree. You make your fool so lies, I pray down to yourself. <laughs> I've learned that people will forget what you have said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Miss Lou made us feel happy, proud, to be who we are. When you're talking to me, talking to me, I mean, for several your mind. A wheel ride through the gate, you see, man. And all the call, them call. I wouldn't look. I don't business in a them cascas. For my life is open book. Oh. 
On October 20, 2016, 10 years after her death in 2006, Jamaica's queen of social commentary peppered with laughter is again allowing us an unfettered view into her life. Documents she donated to the National Library of Jamaica upon her migration to Toronto, Canada in the latter years of her life have been archived and officially launched for public consumption. Memories are essential to our humanity. And as human beings, we have an innate need to remember the past. We must record our stories, and we must preserve and protect our heritage and our history. With the archives now at the National Library, it will facilitate keeping the memories of Miss Lou alive and that we do not forget what she did and how she did it. Louise Bennett was a profoundly influential figure in the development of Jamaican self-confidence. She taught us to value the creation of our people, to accept our ways of expression, to celebrate our unique Jamaican swag and spirit, and to be confident in who we are. Therefore, Miss Lou will not and cannot be confined to our glorious past. She is still very relevant today. Thank you. Through this new resource, Miss Lou Archives, we get a glimpse into the life of this Jamaican cultural icon as we have never ever seen before. The Miss Lou Archives presents the personal collection of unpublished material, including photographs, recordings, diaries, letters, and drafts in her own handwriting and other artifacts. It adds to the vast trove of works by Jamaicans and about Jamaica, which is housed here at the National Library of Jamaica. As of today, persons researching the evolution of Jamaican literature Jamaican language, Jamaican theatre, folklore, and the life of the Honorable Louise Bennett Coverley herself will not have done far enough research unless they consult these archives. So much was donated that the newly unveiled catalogue represents only about 80% of what is available. Much more is still to be catalogued from the personal papers of Miss Lou's husband, Eric Coverley, who was himself a theatre legend. Today, not only are we celebrating Miss Lou, but we are celebrating Eric Coverley. We have to recognize the part that he has played. He also was an extremely creative individual. The Miss Lou and Eric Coverley archives is located in the Special Collections Department of the National Library. The collection is organized into 10 main series, which are further divided into other subseries you would be able to access it online. However, to view the documents, you will need to come to the National Library of Jamaica. Clients can consult the archive, you can make notes, but when, when you must acknowledge where you got the information from. In order for you to get copies, to, do, to use in a publication or any other form of reproduction, you must contact Miss Lou's estate. Miss Lou was selfless and operated in the premise that she would not hide her talent under a bushel, but to share it not only with her fellow Jamaicans, but persons all over the world. She was Jamaica. We didn't think she would be going anywhere. As a matter of fact, you thought she would be with you forever. And in the, in the form of her papers, she is with us forever. I wish not for preeminence, nor grand prize in a lottery, but power to express my whims and thoughts in poetry.
road just walking up and down. My aunt you to say, keep by your mouth the girl tree. You make your fool so lies a pride out yourself. <laughs> Know your numbers and control the keys to a healthier heart. Know the numbers for your blood pressure, cholesterol level, blood glucose level, and your weight and body mass index. Find out the risks they represent and what you need to do to stay healthy. Talk to your doctor and start making healthy lifestyle choices to prevent a heart attack or stroke. Yeah, Valentine's Day was this past Tuesday, and maybe your heart fluttered, stood still, or dropped. But if you don't protect that precious organ of yours, you may not be around next love day to even eat a bar of chocolate. That vital organ needs to be cared, caressed, and treated right, even though you can't see it. Eat right, enjoy a balanced diet, and don't forget to exercise. If you need assistance in caring for your heart, trained specialists are ready to help, even for free. As the nation celebrates Heart Month during February, cardiologists based at the Heart Foundation of Jamaica are conducting screenings. Screenings for risk factors associated with sudden cardiac arrest. It is important for persons to know if they have any of the underlying conditions that may lead to cardiac arrest. These include a family history of heart disease or stroke, drug abuse, hypothyroidism, underlying heart conditions such as coronary artery disease and congenital heart disease or severe heart failure. For screenings, call the foundation at 926-4378 or visit the offices at 28 Beechwood Avenue in St. Andrew for details. Remember, sudden cardiac death, could it happen to you? And I'll tell you first about the, the reasons when the police should not seize the vehicles because they don't have the lawful authority to do so. If you don't have a driver's license in your possession, the police should not seize the vehicle. They can prosecute you under the Road Traffic Act. Now there's a difference between not having a driver's license and not having, a, and, and not having your driver's license in your possession. If a person was never issued with a driver's license, that person clearly should not be driving a motor vehicle. What the police will do in those circumstances is that for one, the person will be prosecuted. If they find out that the owner of the vehicle allowed the individual without a driver's license to use the vehicle, that person, the owner, can be prosecuted as well. Otherwise, the police will take possession of the motor vehicle because they will not allow a continuation of the offense. They will take possession of the motor vehicle and will get someone who has a driver's license or the owner to come and claim that vehicle. We don't seize a motor vehicle for no insurance coverage. The person will be prosecuted, but they will, it is not a seizable offense. No registration of fitness is not a seizable offense. The police can lawfully seize your vehicle if you don't, if the vehicle is not licensed. There is a provision in law that is referred to as the month of grace. So one month after your registration expire, if you are within that one month period, the police should not seize the vehicle. Your vehicle can be seized lawfully if you don't have a regis pl registration plate affixed. So you're driving around with, with no registration plate, it can be seized. Or if the registration plate is so obscure that you can't see what's on it, your vehicle can be seized under the Road Traffic Act. 
there are other acts that the police can lawfully seize your motor vehicle. For instance, if you are operating in, in contravention with the provisions of your license that was issued to you, you, you can, your vehicle can be seized under the Road Traffic Act as well. Also, under the Dangerous Drug Act, Section 24 of that act, allow the police to seize vehicle if the vehicle is suspected to be used in the commission of those offences. Also, on, the, on, a, on a broader sense, is that if the police have reason and evidence that your vehicle was involved in a criminal activity, then the vehicle can be seized and the owners can be held accountable even if they were not the ones that were driving the vehicle at the time. So those are the circumstances when your vehicle can be lawfully seized by the police. There are other provisions when you can have your vehicle towed. If you park in areas that are designated no parking, if you park your motor vehicles that are too close to fire hydrants, then the, your vehicles can be towed and in instances where your vehicles are seized, the vehicle should not be returned to you until the provisions of the law is satisfied. So if your vehicle was seized for not, for, 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 for not being registered or licensed, it will not be returned to you until you go and get your vehicle licensed and you pay the appropriate and prescribed fines, then your vehicle will be released to you. So it's important for persons to know when your vehicle can be lawfully seized as opposed to when it cannot be lawfully seized. This is where we close the pages for today's show. Remember, the information continues to flow on our social media pages. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You may also download our app from the Google Play Store, or for more features, click on our YouTube channel. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Have yourselves a great weekend. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.